Well, I've got a couple of requests um, to explain a little bit more detail how I made the egg turner for my incubator in that last video. Um, and I thought I'd go ahead and outline the process for you. It's pretty simple and uh, nice and cheap. The whole little egg turner system will cost between 10 and 15 dollars, really. Um, the basic uh, component you're going to need to find uh, is what they call a telescope clock motor. Search eBay, I found this one uh, twice now. This is the second one I've purchased on there um, for $6 after shipping. So you can get them super cheap if you look around. If you can't find a telescope clock motor, um, anything with a super low RPM would work. Something like a uh, disco ball motor, uh, a 1 RPM motor there. This one's 1 tenth of an RPM. Um, anything under an RPM, even no matter how slow, even if it's one two hundredth of an RPM, will work out fine for you. Uh, so search around. I found uh, plenty of those style of motors on eBay for pretty cheap. Um, and then next thing you'll need is just a, a little teeny bit of a quarter inch ply or thin wood. Um, you'll need a one furring strip or one by two, um, and uh, they come in eight foot sections, so that's plenty. They're like a buck or a buck fifty. And then you'll need uh, some quarter inch dowel rod. I bought two sticks of quarter inch dowel rod from Home Depot. They're 75 cents each. Um, and that's the, basically what you need for the whole thing. Some glue and um, uh, a big screw would be helpful. And I'll explain that uh, as I go into how to make the uh, little motor turn dealy. Uh, but that's pretty much it for supplies. Okay, so what we'll do first is um, create the main tray that'll turn the eggs over. Uh, uh, basically what you'll do here is create a little box from the furring strips um, that'll have little dowel rods going across. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do uh, to determine all the dimensions of, uh, of the box here is uh, take an egg that you, uh, you know, typically, like if you're raising your own chickens, you might have a typical size egg that runs a little bit bigger than the normal egg that you get in a, you know, classic carton you get from the grocery store, or it might be a little smaller. So take an egg that's pretty um, average sized for you, put a dot on it and put, a, put it next to a ruler and roll it over until that dot um, stops there and it came out to seven inches of distance. So you only need it to do about half that to turn it over that far onto the other side. So three and a half inches. I went ahead and did four on mine just to, you know, it's plenty. Count for a big egg or smaller one will turn plenty. Um, and so you're going to want four inches of travel um, for your tray. So you take the inside dimensions of your incubator. For mine, they happen to be just over 13 inches wide by about uh, by about 19 inches. Um, in length, so you're, I'm going to make my tray four inches shorter than that so it has some room to go back and forth. Um, and so I went ahead and cut some furring strips to the 15 inch diameter you see on my little drawing. And uh, when you're cutting the side pieces, you don't want to cut 13 inches like I have. You want to, uh, you have to account for the thickness of, you know, little boards going over the edge. So what I do to measure that is I just put them next to each other and uh, put the board out there and measure along here until you get to 13 inches, mark it and cut both of them at the same time. But anyway, um, that's the basic box and uh, what you're going to do next after you create the little box is you've got to have a place for the dowel rods to go. Uh, determining the spacing of the dowel rods mathematically can be kind of a, a bit of a pain. So. Basically what I did is, again, I put an egg next to a ruler and uh, determined the, how, about how wide it is. And a lot of mine were coming in at an inch and just about three quarters or, or you know, an, exactly an inch and three quarters or a little lower. Um, so I went ahead and made mine about two inch spacing. Um, the thing is, I kind of want it to be symmetrical. So um, I figured out that if I um, measured the inside dimension here, uh, it's about 13 and 3 quarters inch. Um, and I tried to divide that on a calculator um, by, you know, however many sections I wanted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven sections. Um, and it came up with like 1.96 inches or something. So rather than fuss about that, what I did is I, you know, picked just about two inches. I think I took like a sixteenth off or an eighth off. 
and then I measured them out and um, the last section was a little bit long so what I did is made a mark exactly the distance that I wanted and then the edge of the board stuck off about you know that far or something and I just made a mark over here and then trimmed it um, so that you know now it's a little bit shorter than 15 inches in length which doesn't matter gives you a little playroom and I have a nicely symmetrical uh, little, little spacing so every egg will be in the same situation um, if you want more details on that feel free to email me I can uh, if, if that wasn't clear enough um, but anyway then what you're gonna do after you mark out those spacings um, this way as far as height I chose about 5 eighths inch up because that was a uh, just below halfway up the height of most eggs when they're laying down on their side that way it wouldn't cause the unit to when it's pushing on the eggs to try to roll over the top of them if it's just below it the uh, force of the eggs while it's pushing it'll keep it keep the you know it actually cause a downward pressure uh, whereas if you go a little too high all the pulls are going to be hitting the tops of the eggs and it might make it raise up and go over the eggs uh, so that's uh, basically how I did the spacing there and then you just cut uh, the dowel rods uh, about like if you look at this one actually let me get a one more if you can kind of see that on camera, I just cut it about a quarter inch long on either side, so a half inch long, um, and that will give you plenty of, you know, and then you do um, holes in there that are about a quarter inch on either side or a little deeper, and that way you have plenty to go in on both ends. Um, so all that's left there is assembling that up. I want, I'll do that off the camera and bring it back, but you'll end up with everything nice and evenly spaced, and I'll show you what to do next. So here it is assembled. I just took some uh, brad nails, popped them in there, put some glue in the joints, and uh, you're set to go there. Got a nice square with the rungs in there. You can uh, pop your egg in, and the spacing's nice and tight, so I won't allow the uh, egg to turn sideways. That's kind of handy. Um, the next part of this little tray is going to be um, the guide for the motor, and it's you basically take a couple of short you know, maybe an inch or so um, tall blocks of, from furring strip that you cut out and uh, cut a couple of half inch strips or so of, uh, you know, plywood or uh, any kind of quarter inch or thin wood um, and you're going to create a little gap here that your bolt from your motor mount, I'll explain how to make the motor mount thingy in a second is going to ride in and when it turns it'll pull the tray, you know, backwards and forwards so in order to figure out where you're going to put this, we're going to have to get everything figured out with the motor first. So we'll set that aside and I'll show you what we're going to do to mount your motor in your incubator. I guess first things first, um, to make this funny motor mount, um, what, what you're going to get when you have the motor is it's going to come with some kind of little plastic motor mount deal. And it kind of turns around on the arbor if you turn, if you if you try to twist it hard enough, that's supposed to protect the motor. Uh, in this case, for this application, we don't want that. We don't want to do that. So um, the way I got around it is there's a little flat on the arbor, and I drilled a hole. I don't know if you can see this, but I drilled a hole in that part of the plastic motor mount and put a screw in there and screwed it in until it hit the flat of the arbor. And now the thing won't twist on that. And there's three little screws. Uh, that came on this little plastic motor mount. So I took a chunk of MDF and uh, drilled three little holes in it on the same spot, screwed the thing in there. The hole in the center is for the motor, the arbor of uh, the motor, and that goes in there a little bit. That also, that hole is also going to help you determine how far out to put this bolt. And you want it out two inches exactly, so that when it travels in a full circle, it creates four inches of distance, because that's the travel you want, four inches. And then you just trim everything nicely to, to fit, not much longer than the bolt. I tapered that just so it doesn't want to hit the wall as it spins around in the back. Um, and then you'll take a little square of, um, you know, like plywood again or something, it's quarter inch, uh, and that's going to be for the motor to sit on. I cut the corners, you know, for no particular reason, looks. Um, and you just want it to be um, deep enough so that, you know, when the thing, when the motor's turned around, all the way that you have about you know three quarters inch or an inch or an inch and a half it doesn't really matter I'll show you why in a second but that's what the motor mount is going to look like and there's plenty of space um, 
and you'll take these two doohickeys, uh, put them together like that, and use some 45, in, 45 degree angle cuts out of your furring strip uh, to just glue it together, add some rigidity. And what that'll do for you is you can pop a couple holes here and here, maybe one down there, put some screws through the edge of your incubator, and then it's all set up there. I'm going to go ahead and glue this together and then show you what to do next. So I went ahead and uh, put this together, just you know, put some glue in there. And uh, as far as assembly, in a nice easy way, uh, this part lies up against flush with the back. So you can take these little blocks, set them on the table with this piece of wood, glue them and then pop some nails in there if you have a pneumatic air nailer, or drill some holes and screw it. And then you'll have this thing ready and you can put some glue along the blocks in the back of the edge of this and then set that one down on it with it lined up on a table again, drill some holes. That way it'll align it for you. So anyway, there's the little assembled unit. And uh, what your next step will be, I'm going to use this little brass bushing that's towards the... Uh, that doesn't turn, it's the, the metal arbor, silver part that turns. That I'm going to use to ride up against the edge of the wood here. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, when, it's, when it's on the top, that's going to be bumping into the wood. So what we can do, in effect, is use that as a guide. And I'm going to figure out where the center of the screw is and draw a line across the bottom there with, I don't know if you can see that, but I used a ruler behind the screw and drew a line so that it goes across where that bolt goes through. And um, this is going to be against the wall of your incubator. And we want the, this, when it slides all the way back, to be against the wall of your incubator. So you can line those up. I usually purposely go a little bit, this thing, have this thing overriding the edge a little teeny bit so that you have a little gap when it's fully back so it's not trying to push it into the wall. And what we'll do is transfer that mark onto um, the, the wood here. And then um, I'll just, you know, draw that straight across. This would be better with a straight, ed or with a square of course, but didn't have one handy for the video. Um, and then we can measure how far in that is and transfer that same line over on the other side. What is that? Okay. And uh, what that will give you is the center of the channel that you want to make. So then I take the little blocks here and you, you draw a line across both of them. I tried to get roughly in the center but I didn't. As long as I go like this, they'll line up. So I'll line those up so that the line is right on the line that's on the little blocks. And then I can glue those down, pop some nails in. And that'll give me a guide. I can put these um, and center it or, you know, put them a equidistant away from that little line in the center. And now you've got the channel in the right spot so that when it's full back, this will be flush with the wall. So again, just so that makes sense, I transferred the line from here, flush with the back, just a little bit past so you have a gap, and then transferred it on there. Made sure that same mark, same distance over on either side. I put a, a line down, both blocks, in the same spot, and then I'll take them like this and make sure those lines match, glue that all down. And then again, we're going to glue these so they're the same distance. The gap is just enough for that screw to go through, maybe a little more in the same distance on either side. And that will give you the travel you want hitting that back wall, just barely. Um, I'll go ahead and assemble that and show you how this whole thing is going to work. Okay, so I went ahead and assembled it, lined it up with the lines like we talked about. And to determine the spacing here, I just popped the screw in there, made sure there was a little bit of play. Um, so I could slide in and out easily and um, made sure that you know it was kind of centered so that the line was halfway in between that gap, pop some nails in on either end. You're set to go. And then I just uh, used some wire nuts and uh, spliced these cords together. Just took a regular extension cord and plugged it in um, and had the, made the motor turn all the way around backwards. 
um, and then you can kind of test your fit and see if you did your job right. Um, and um, what you can do is put it into the gap, line it up with the back of the, uh, you know, this is going to be flush against the wall of the incubator. So this will represent the wall, and you should have the teeniest little bit of a gap between the bottom here. It's going to be hard to actually show this on camera, I'll attempt, but uh, see if I can line it up. <laughs> but you'll get the idea here, so um, when I do that, there's going to be this teeny little gap. And if you can see that, great. If not, trust me, it's there. <laughs> and that way it'll pull it all the way around to the back wall, but not quite hit it, so it doesn't put any strain on the motor. And then when it flips around this way, it'll push the tray all the way over uh, to the other wall. And um, this was originally exactly 15 inches, and um, my inside of my incubator is about 19 inches. I think it's a little over, but it's a good idea to have some sort of a gap, you know, like, so it's not just the four inches of travel and it hits the wall. So maybe, you know, that's why I shortened this thing up a little bit. Now it's about 14 and 15 sixteenths, so, um, and there was a little bit extra room in the incubator, so I should have like a little bit of a quarter inch gap play on the other wall when it's rotated all the way around. Um, this motor uh, probably isn't designed to run uh, with a load like this continuously. It is designed to run continuously with a load it's probably going to heat up. So I would recommend um, getting this uh, plugged into like a timer uh, and that way your eggs aren't turning all the time too. If you plug it into a timer you can get from Home Depot or, or some kind of store like that where it, it allows it to have electricity for about five minutes, once an hour or so. Um, if you give it five minutes of electricity, this one-tenth RPM motor will turn halfway around and then stop and then wait an hour and turn the other half around so your eggs are flipped over on that side for an hour and then turn back over this way uh, for an hour. And that'll keep the motor life nice and long. You don't have to worry about it heating up. And um, it'll turn your eggs. You can also program it to turn your eggs as, as often or as less often as you want. Um, and that's pretty much it. This system can be modified to use any different style of motor. Again, if you have a bigger motor, maybe one of the disco ball motors, all you gotta do is move this little doohickey that you put on there out further to accommodate a larger motor and you know, make the motor mount bigger. So it's really uh, pretty uh, versatile if you have a different motor. So don't, don't worry too much if you can't find the exact same one. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email or message, um, and I'd uh, be happy to try to help you build one too. Nice and cheap, and they work well, so good luck. I knew I was going to forget something. Um, anyway, uh, there's a couple things I wanted to tell you that I forgot to mention. I didn't have them, so I couldn't do it on this one, but it's not a bad idea to um, get some little of those wood plugs. I don't know uh, if I can explain this well, but. You know, if you drill a hole for a screw and you want to plug it, they make these little um, dowels, the dowel rod insert things that have a little mound on the top, a rounded end, and you can drill a hole, pop those in there, and it'll create like a little, little hardwood uh, bump. And if you put four of those on there, um, what that's going to do is decrease the drag, so that, you know, dragging this across, um, actually, I mean, it's pretty, going across this stuff pretty easy. But if you put those four little bumps in there, um, that'll decrease the drag, make it easier to push, um, so that the motor doesn't have to work as hard. Um, you could even get super creative and put some little bearings in there to ro roll around if you wanted. Um, and then as far as when you're mounting this on the wall, um, you know, how high up do you need it? That doesn't really matter. I usually put it about a, a little half inch to three quarters of an inch above the gap rather than right on it. And what that'll do is that way, if it's up this high, when you unscrew the screw to try to pull this out, it'll give you a little more clearance between it and the motor when you're trying to pull the thing out of the incubator. So that's the advantage there. And if you have a long screw, you can get away with a little more gap um, and have a little more clearance so you can get it out easier. Um, other than that, um, I think I didn't forget anything else. <laughs> if anything seems confusing or I seem to have not uh, given enough detail on something, again, feel free to send me a message. And thanks again for watching.